Finasteride, does it have an effect on your sperm and will it harm your fertility? Let's find out. So firstly, what you need to know is that male fertility depends on three main sperm characteristics. And these are as follows. Number one, sperm count. Are there a lot of the guys there? Number two, sperm motility. How well do these little guys swim? And number three, sperm morphology. How well are these suckers built? Are they built really well or are they kind of skinny fat? And guys, just for the scientists out there, I am including genetic integrity in sperm morphology. Okay, so I looked at three main studies to try and give you guys a balanced answer. There are some smaller studies out there, but I think that these three studies really cover the bulk of the data that's out there. Okay, so the first study I looked at was done by John K. Amory, and it was published in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. And basically what it did is it took 99 men and it looked at hormonal parameters and sperm parameters in all healthy 99 men over 52 weeks, which is one year. So all these 99 guys were split up evenly among three groups. They had one group take finasteride, five milligrams daily for a year. They had a second group take deutasteride, 0.5 milligrams daily for a year. And they had one group that was just taking placebo for a year. Let's find out the results. By the way, this was a double blind randomized placebo control trial, which is the best in its class for deducible evidence. The results were as follows. Ejaculate volume, total sperm count and sperm motility was dramatically reduced from baseline in the drug groups. However, this reduction from baseline did not put these men in the low sperm count or infertile range. They were still considered fully fertile by standard metrics, except for 5% of individuals that were pushed into what we call the oligozoospermia range or the low sperm count range. And it's deduced that for these 5% of individuals, they were just overly sensitive to 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. The good news is that after 24 weeks of follow-up, all the subjects did normalize and go back to baseline after stopping taking the medication. And what they also found, interestingly, is that serum testosterone was raised about 25%. And if you want to know why, you can listen to one of my previous videos on how finasteride works. But many people always ask me, does this raise in te serum testosterone help you build muscle? Well, I guess theoretically, yes, it can, because testosterone is more anabolic than DHT is. Now, this study used benign prosthetic hypertrophy doses of 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, the 5 milligram finasteride and the 0.5 dutasteride. There is another study that was conducted that looked at one milligram finasteride, that is the dose we commonly use for hair loss, although we actually use a much lower dose than that, but they looked at the one milligram finasteride. Let's check that one out. So this study was done by J.W. Overstreet and it was published in the Journal of Urology. And it was also a double-blind randomized placebo control trial, which as we said is the best as far as studies go. And it included almost double the participants as the previous trial. So 181 men participated uh, in this particular trial. And of note, 181 healthy men. And by healthy, I mean at baseline, they had a normal hormonal profile and they had normal semen parameters at baseline. And this study that also ran almost a year, it ran for 48 weeks, found that there was absolutely no effect on spermatogenesis whatsoever in any of these subjects. So this third study I looked at was a retrospective study that was done on men who were already having issues with fertility and sperm counts. And here we actually get some interesting results. So in the population of men who were already experiencing difficulties with fertility, we actually saw that low dose finasteride cause a marked worsening of their symptoms. And in good news, it was reversed when the finasteride was stopped. So after a 24 week follow up, they did see a marked increase in their parameters, but still in this group, they really did uh, take a knock, 
even with a low dose finasteride. So what does this all mean and how do we interpret this clinically? To break it down simply, if you're a healthy young guy, low doses of finasteride are not going to affect your sperm and they're not going to affect your fertility, unless you're taking high doses of finasteride or dutasteride. And if for some reason you do get negatively effective, all the data points to the fact that after stopping the medication, you will go back to your normal baseline. But if you have had fertility problems in the past or you suspect that you might have fertility problems, my recommendation would be to stay off the finasteride at least until you make your progeny. And if you're concerned that you might have these issues or if you don't know if you have them, you can always get a semen analysis. Are we going to do a semen analysis for everyone? No, I don't think it's necessary. But if you are concerned, that's definitely something that's feasible and you can do it. But all in all, this data is very reassuring to me because if you're a young guy and you're taking low doses of finasteride, the chances of you having a negative effect on your fertility or sperm are very low. And if you do run into problems, stopping the medication seems to reverse them most of the time. So all in all, it seems that 5-alpha reductase inhibition and DHT don't play such a large role in fertility and spermatogenesis. But do you know what does? testosterone and testosterone replacement therapy, androgenic anabolic steroids. These are the worst possible things you can do for male fertility. So please avoid these substances if you have not yet had children and had a family. Thank you.